Welcome to the Traveler Cyber Academy, a webinar series on cybersecurity and cyber risk management. Our topic for today, ransomware. There are many kinds of cyber crime that can impact businesses both large and small. Ransomware is one of the more modern and prevalent types of cyber crime that we see today. As you probably know, ransomware locks or encrypts the files on a computer, or the computer itself. In order to recover access to the files, the owner must pay a ransom, most often using electronic currency known as Bitcoin. In this session of Traveler's Cyber Academy, we will look at how ransomware works and how it spreads. We'll hear from Kurt Ostriker, a director of digital forensics at Traveler's, who was part of a team that examined CryptoLocker, a well-known form of ransomware, in 2013. We will also explain what Bitcoins are. Ransomware became much more common after the advent of Bitcoins, which provide an easy and anonymous way for criminals to obtain payment from victims of ransomware. When a business is infected with ransomware, the consequences often go beyond simply paying a ransom. Christine Mapes is a senior claim specialist at Travelers who has handled numerous ransomware claims and she will describe the actual consequences when a business is infected with ransomware. Finally, we will cover important steps that a business can take to protect itself from ransomware. Demanding ransom for the safe return of a person or thing is not new, of course. Julius Caesar, for example, was ransomed after he was captured by pirates in the Mediterranean. In the digital world, ransomware started out as a con, in which banners would be displayed on a victim's computer stating that the computer had been infected with spyware or other malicious software. The victim was asked to pay money to remove the spyware or to install antivirus software, but the victim's computer and computer files were essentially unharmed. In 2012, a form of ransomware known as Reviton gained notoriety when it locked victims out of their computer systems. Reviton displayed a banner customized for different countries, stating that the victim had been caught by police while committing a crime, such as viewing child pornography. The victim was instructed to pay a law enforcement fine of several hundred dollars to unlock the computer. Although the computer was in fact locked, there were ways to bypass Reviton and to access the computer and the files on the computer without too much difficulty. In the fall of 2013, the infamous ransomware known as CryptoLocker appeared. CryptoLocker was a game changer in two ways. First, it encrypted the files on victim computers so that even a trained forensic examiner would be unable to recover data from the computer's hard drives without paying for the decryption key. Second, CryptoLocker required that payment of the ransom be made through anonymous methods such as Bitcoin. Ransomware also began appearing on mobile phones and devices, starting with ransomware that would lock out a phone or device and then progressing to ransomware that would encrypt the contents of the phone or device. CryptoLocker's success spurred the development of many new ransomware variants, such as TorrentLocker, AlphaCrypt, CryptoWall, TeslaCrypt, Locky, and others. Modern ransomware is designed to maximize the consequences to the victim and to force payment of the ransom. Some ransomware is even designed to steal from the Bitcoin wallet that is used to pay the ransom. In 2013, the travelers began receiving a number of claims related to CryptoLocker. Its investigation of CryptoLocker was led by Kurt Ostriker, who is now a director of digital forensics. Welcome to the Traveler's Digital Forensics Lab. The lab was designed with the intention of being able to process the digital evidence that comes into Travelers in the form of our claim investigations, internal matters, and also looking at the general cybersecurity threats that are out there. Some of the forms of digital evidence that we see here at Travelers comes in the form of cell phones, hard drives, computer systems themselves, social media, the emerging internet of things, video, and the greater cyber threats to both Travelers and to our customers. One of the core components of the Digital Forensics Lab is the malware firing range. The malware firing range is an isolated network and set of computers and servers that allow us to do advanced malware research in support of cyber threats. That allows us to take a deeper dive and really see 
what a particular strain of malware is doing. How is it infecting a system? What is it doing once it's on the system? What types of data are being exfiltrated and passed on to the attacker? Ransomware is a form of malware that infects the system and then immediately looks to try to encrypt the critical contents on a user's hard drive. Once the encryption is complete, the user is typically presented with a splash screen on their desktop that demands some form of ransom, typically in some form of virtual currency such as Bitcoin. In 2013, we saw a crypto locker, a form of ransomware, emerge on the scene. And we recognized right away that this was a new and emerging threat. And it was just going to be the beginning of multiple strains of ransomware that would soon follow. So we took a real close look at CryptoLocker to find out how did it infect the systems? What did it do to the systems itself? Did it destroy any of the hardware? Was it simply a software layer where it was encrypting files? Was any data being exfiltrated? And so on. And that was really important to us for our claims investigations and also to pass on to educate our customers on what is the best way to respond to a CryptoLocker infection. Astonishing Furniture is a fictitious website that we developed in-house here at Trailers in order to provide a means to better educate our customers on some of the greater cyber risks. Today we're going to take a look at how an attacker will use a vulnerability in the Astonishing Furniture's ad network to pass the ransomware through Astonishing Furniture and onto their victim through what's known as a watering hole attack. Let's take a closer look. One of the modern ways that ransomware is spread begins with the poisoning of internet affiliate advertising networks. This is a fictitious website for a store called Astonishing Furniture. Like many retailers, Astonishing Furniture displays advertisements on its internet site. These ads were not created by Astonishing Furniture. Instead, Astonishing Furniture would be paid a fee to allow an affiliate network to place ads on its website. Ads which are expected to be, and usually are, legitimate. In some cases, cyber criminals are able to infiltrate the affiliate network and place a malicious ad. As a result, many visitors to the Astonishing Furniture website will be infected by the ad, even though the computers and the web server of Astonishing Furniture have not themselves been compromised. In fact, visitors can be infected even if they do not click on the malicious ad. This kind of attack is sometimes described as a watering hole attack because visitors to the website are caught like prey coming to a watering hole. Generally, the victims of a watering hole attack are not immediately infected with ransomware. Instead, they are infected with malicious software that makes them part of a botnet, together with hundreds of thousands of other similarly compromised computers. The computers in the botnet are effectively under the control of a single criminal or group who is known as the botmaster or bot herder. The botmaster can obtain direct access to the computers in the botnet by using a remote access trojan or rat. The botmaster can also use the computers in the botnet to send spam or to conduct denial of service attacks. Finally, the botmaster can install ransomware on any or all of the computers in the botnet. CryptoLocker, for example, was often distributed through the Game Over Zeus botnet. Ransomware is one of the easiest ways for cyber criminals to get cash from a compromised computer. Unlike credit card fraud, there is no need to make a counterfeit card and withdraw money from an ATM, or to deal with other criminals by trafficking and stolen payment card information. According to the U.S. government, more than 4,000 ransomware attacks have occurred each day this year. Exactly what happens when ransomware is installed on a computer? Here is a mock screenshot of a victim's computer showing what would happen if the computer was infected by the Lockheed ransomware. The files would be encrypted and the file names would be changed, leaving behind nothing but gibberish. The instructions for recovering the encrypted files are provided in LockheedInstructions.txt, which instructs the victim to access the dark web in order to obtain a private key and a decryption program. More information about the dark web was provided in an earlier session of the Traveler Cyber Academy, The Dark Side of the Internet, which is available for viewing at Travelers.com CyberAdvantage. 
Upon accessing the specified site on the dark web, the victim will be instructed to create a Bitcoin wallet and to pay 0.5 Bitcoins in order to obtain the Lockheed Decryptor. So what are Bitcoins? And why are they the payment method of choice for modern cyber criminals? Bitcoins are a method of electronic payment devised by an unknown individual in 2009. Unlike US dollars and other familiar forms of currency, Bitcoins are not backed by any government. They are entirely a peer-to-peer -peer payment method. We'll see what that means shortly. In order to use Bitcoins, businesses or individuals create digital wallets. These wallets are used to store Bitcoins and track Bitcoin transactions, which can be conducted anonymously through the use of digital signatures. The ability to conduct anonymous financial transactions without any government oversight is the reason why Bitcoins have become the payment method of choice for criminals conducting ransomware attacks. For the most part, Bitcoins are obtained through online sites known as Bitcoin exchanges, where they are bought and sold like any other commodity. Like other commodities, the value of Bitcoin fluctuates over time, as shown here over the past five years. As of October 2016, one Bitcoin is worth approximately 600 US dollars. If there is no central bank issuing Bitcoins, where do they come from? In short, new Bitcoins are issued according to the peer-to-peer -peer protocol that was established when Bitcoins were created in 2009. The protocol specifies that every Bitcoin transaction, every single Bitcoin transaction conducted since 2009, is stored in a shared public record known as the Bitcoin blockchain. A simple transaction, for example, might involve somebody using digital signature A making a payment of one Bitcoin to somebody using digital signature B. Groups of Bitcoin transactions are combined into a single block, and the block is linked to the prior block by including a digital fingerprint of the earlier block. The entire process connects every Bitcoin transaction to every other Bitcoin transaction ever conducted in a way that ensures Bitcoins cannot be forged, counterfeited, or spent more than once. The process of packaging and encoding each block of transactions is time-consuming and computationally intensive, so the Bitcoin protocol awards a defined number of Bitcoins to each individual or group of individuals who successfully add a new block of transactions to the blockchain. This process, known as Bitcoin mining, is how new Bitcoins are created. Understanding how the ransom is paid, however, is sometimes the easy question. The harder question, for a business that does not have an adequate response and recovery plan, may be deciding whether the ransom should be paid. Many authorities, including the FBI, have identified serious risks that should be considered before paying the ransom. Criminals may not actually provide a way to recover the lost files, and payment of the ransom may cause the business to be targeted again in the future. Furthermore, ransom payments fund and encourage illegal activity. The decision of whether to pay the ransom should only be made after consulting with an experienced attorney, such as a breach coach that can be made available through the victim's insurance company. As a specialist in cyber claims at The Travelers, Christine Mapes knows very well that there can be other consequences to a business that has been infected with ransomware beyond just paying the ransom demand. At Travelers, we've seen ransomware claims more than double in 2016. The first question that they ask is, what should I do? Should I pay the ransom or should I um, restore from backups or find some other means of getting our data back? And they're also concerned about making sure that their operations are back up and running in a timely manner. They also want to know um, what they can do to prevent this incident from happening again. 
Given that ransomware is arguably uh, the most profitable malware on the market, I think that it will continue to become more sophisticated and widespread. I think because it's so profitable, um, the attackers are going to find new methods of entry um, through backdoors and system vulnerabilities that are going to make the ransomware harder to detect um, and therefore more profitable and, and lucrative for, for the attackers. They do not discriminate, so they can hit organizations, both large and small, um, as well as individual users. Many times the breach isn't limited to just extortion, um, and depending on the type of ransomware attack, an additional forensic investigation may be necessary to determine whether or not there was access or unauthorized access to identity information. Our claims response team uh, here at Travelers assists our insurance every step of the way. We partner with our experts and resources to provide them with an appropriate um, and immediate incident response plan and work towards a fast resolution. In its current state, Ransomware is a commodity malware threat. Hackers are indiscriminately trying to target anyone and everyone they can, in the hopes of catching victims off guard who may not have effective backup strategies. As we look to the future, targeted ransomware could become an even scarier proposition. If hackers are able to successfully breach a sensitive environment, such as a key system involved in e-commerce, the value of that asset could allow very expensive ransom demands to be made and to be paid. Fortunately, there are several ways for a business to protect itself and not become a target of opportunity for ransomware. An effective data backup strategy includes offline and off-site data redundancy, and it must be current and well-tested. Organizations have a variety of sensitive data. The most sensitive information things that businesses require to operate should be isolated from less business critical sections of the network and more safeguarded. A business continuity plan should be in place and frequently tested. Employee education programs should be used to make users aware of phishing and malware and make it easier for employees to know whom to call when they suspect an anomaly on their network. Finally, businesses should prepare an incident response plan in case of compromise and in case a breach were to happen, have proper insurance in place. Thank you very much for your time today. We hope you enjoyed this session of the Traveler Cyber Academy on Ransomware and understand better how important it is for your business to be prepared. If you have any further questions, please contact us at trvcyber at ems.travelers.com. For a replay of this session to share with your colleagues or to find additional resources on this topic, please visit travelers.com backslash cyberadvantage.